name's Misha. I'm a senior here in the College of Engineering. I am a runner, I'm a woman, and I'm a physicist. Hi, my name is Catherine, and I'm a third year physics PhD student and physics blogger. I love reading literature, I'm a woman, and I'm a physicist. Hi, again. <laughs> my name is Liz. I'm an African American. I'm a woman, and I'm a physicist. Our voices are loud, but our numbers are 46. <laughs> the percentage of AP physics students who are female, 20. The percentage of undergraduate physics degrees awarded to women, 13. The percentage of PhD physics degrees awarded to women, 8. Eight. The percentage of full faculty in physics who are female. Our numbers have been published. But what's the story behind them? Do you remember why you wanted to study physics? Well, I've always loved math and astronomy. But when I entered high school, I had no clue what physics was. My junior year high school, um, in high school, physics was required. So I entered the class not really knowing what to expect. Uh, the high school I went to is a science and tech magnet school in Alexandria, Virginia. Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. It's been ranked the number one high school, public high school in the country for like three years in a row. So you'd think, oh, she likes math and astronomy, goes into this like number one physics class, she's gonna come out and just be like, physics! Well, not quite. I felt really dumb in that class, and the teacher was really used to just having smart kids, so he didn't have to put much effort in teaching, and we would just do the work and still all get fours and fives on the AP. So I was like, well, I guess if I want to do engineering, I need to just stick with physics. So I took AP physics, and I came here for physics or for engineering. But during my freshman year, my engineering classes were kind of really boring, and then my electricity and magnetism physics class was really fun. So I just kind of kept sticking to physics, and that's how I got where I am now. So I actually had the opposite experience from Misha. I really enjoyed my high school physics class, and basically I've always really loved math, and when I started high school, um, I thought science was probably where I wanted to be, that math really wasn't quite enough for me. And in my high school, we started with biology and then chemistry, which especially at the high school level, don't have a lot of math in them. So I was kind of like, oh, I don't know about the science thing. But my first day of my AP physics class um, was really wonderful. My teacher started the class by holding a gigantic textbook over his head and asking us what would happen when he let it go. And we stared at him like he was, he was crazy. So we're like, it's just going to fall to the ground. Why are you asking us this silly question? And um, he's like, well, let's think outside the box of it. I mean, you know, would we be able to know if we all rushed up with the ground to meet the book? Um, what if they were rushing towards each other? What if it somehow flew around the room first and everything was moving relative to it? Would, would we know any of these things? And just took us on this great journey into kind of how do physicists think and what does it mean to be a physicist? And I was hooked. My story started a little earlier than they did. I was in sixth grade, and there was one chapter in this book about atoms. And so before then, we studied the sun, we looked at plants, they looked nice and green. <laughs> and then we were talking about atoms, and then I thought, wow, atoms? I'm made of atoms? How is that possible? They're little things, I tried brushing them off, I just couldn't imagine. <laughs> Building blocks of everything, how's that possible? It just kind of blew my mind in a way that kept me interested. And it was only about two pages, well, I guess six pages of that chapter talking about atoms, and there was a paragraph about fission and fusion. And so I went to the library at that point, and I started reading about the, about, um, what were the Manhattan Project and the, the bombs. And then at that point, actually, so some of you may not remember this, but not everyone had internet. <laughs> So, so I actually went to the library so I could go online, um, and, I, and I would just read all I could about modern physics and how I just thought, it, wow, it's so cool, I wish I were born in 1900 and I could have discovered like the neutron or something, it's so cool. And so around that time was a science fair, and I said, well, I'm not going to make one of those volcanoes, like the little the vinegar and baking soda incidents, um, I'm going to talk about nuclear fission, nuclear fusion. So my teacher didn't know what I was doing at all. She really <laughs> didn't. But I said, I set up a pool table to describe fission, like atoms breaking apart, releasing energy. 
And then I set up marshmallows, and actually later on I made Rice Krispie Treats with them. But I didn't <laughs> talk about that in the actual project. It was very tasty. And so, <laughs> and so I took pictures of these, or I set them up, and I did my science work project, and I got first place. I still think it's because I didn't know what I was talking about, though. But that's okay. And after that, I thought physics is really cool, and I know I've just made myself like such a nerd in front of everybody, but I really love it. And so after that, I just kept trying to figure out when, where can I take physics, what can I do with this, and how can I make these really cool stories something that I can be a part of. Yeah. So in the end, we all chose physics because we loved it. We loved the discovery. You know, I'm getting this impression from all of us that we think of physics as the one ring that rules them all. <laughs> <laughs> like precious. <laughs> oh, and all of our physics classmates, it's like the fellowship of the ring, kind of. You take a lot of homeworks. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that was just me. Okay. All right. And the point that you can do anything with a physics degree, I think we all believe that. And it was only after we fell in love with it that we realized it was hard. <laughs> Eigenvectors, Hamiltonians, Lagrangians, and let's not forget those vessel functions. Not always the best of times. <laughs> and it seems like the higher up the ladder you climb, the more you realize you don't know. So let's welcome to my first day of graduate ENM when we start with the principle that light is a con the speed of light is a constant, and then we proceeded to derive Maxwell's equations from that statement. Or my uh, graduate quantum class when they said wave function notation is useless. We're just doing Dirac notation from here on out. There's always something new and something that people were lying about to you before. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, guys, Schrodinger's cat. He has to be dead. He's been in that box for <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it really wasn't that hard. All you had to do was just read Jackson's book on e and and it would make perfect sense. I mean, his book was flawless. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, all right. <laughs> and as if this isn't hard enough, we have to deal with weird looks every time we tell someone that we're physicists. <laughs> with my other male classmates, but I get asked, so what are you doing here? <laughs> or when you enter a bike store just off of campus to get your bike tuned up, and the guy's just like, oh, so are you a student here? Yeah, so what are you studying? Physics. <laughs> <laughs> or when you're talking to a family friend, and that friend asks, oh, so what are you studying in, in college? And I say really excitedly, I'm studying physics. And the response is, what are you going to do with a physics degree? <laughs> Once I heard I was going to be a physician, I didn't stop. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's kind of how that works. <laughs> I'll never forget the time, though, um, when I was in high school, and I was, in front of, I was in front of my house, and I said I wanted to be physics, and they said, wow, you can do math, and you're black and a woman? <laughs> Please, do math. I was like, I guess I need those criteria to do math. <laughs> Aside from all of these challenges, there's that whole, the odds are good thing. But the good are kind of odd. <laughs> Attention here. 
So you kept going to the conference, right? Yes. <laughs> I went every single year. I did. Well, yes, I. Hey. Hi. Uh, <laughs> well, what's going on? Uh, this is the Northeast Conference for Undergraduate Women in Physics. Women in Physics. Okay. A couple things I like a lot. Physics. <laughs> Lady? <laughs> Jared! No, no, no. So, what can I do to help? Well, I guess we do have some suggestions for you. Uh, to start with, like, when we're working on a problem set, you could invite us to come join you guys. Yeah, and then also understand that the way you might feel now, being one of very few men in a room, is actually how a woman feels anytime she's walked into a classroom, um, worked with any collaborators, it's just how it always is on the other side of things. And we also hope that you can understand that if we're ever hesitating to contribute to a discussion, that, that doesn't mean we don't understand it or are incompetent in some way. Yeah, and that women are statistically less likely to sort of vocalize their opinions or state questions in the same way that a man does. So just because we do things differently, it doesn't make it less legitimate. We know we need to work on being more assertive. But we also ask that you pay more attention to what we say, rather than how we say it. I guess really most of these slights are subtle and unintentional, but I think it's important to acknowledge their existence. Yeah, I should definitely keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, now I know the numbers we talked about earlier seem daunting. Well, we could spend our time, and that's why the numbers are still so low, and they're still so low after all these years. Instead, let's focus on the opportunities that lie ahead. 19. That's the number of organizations that are sponsoring this conference tonight. 25. The number of faculty who volunteered their weekends to show their support of this conference. 166. The number of undergraduate physics majors at this conference. 987. The number of undergraduate women in physics sitting in auditoriums at similar conferences across the country at this very moment. By being here this weekend, you've made our numbers larger. And our voices are 166 people stronger. We've shared our experiences with you, and now we look forward to hearing about your experiences. Thank you. guy. <laughs> His name is Jared. Hi. <laughs> I'll be over here. <laughs> it's actually quite a funny story because we thought our, our skill would be really strengthened if we had a guy. And so there was literally an email that went out, right, that said, man needed for... Um, <laughs> Male physicists. Male physicists needed to entertain undergraduate women. <laughs> I got this job just because I'm really quick at Gmail. So, so you can imagine that uh, he's very fast and we really appreciate him. No, and actually, so as he's been going around, he's like, oh, you're the guy. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's the guy? He's like, I'm, I'm the, the guy. guy. <laughs> 